friends, welcome back again to another episode of Tactical Enlightenment. This YouTube channel is dedicated to all things Bannerlord, but especially of, of late this Peasant's Revolt here. Uh, this Peasant's Revolt is now in what I would consider its mature stage. Uh, we now have three cities and we are beset by enemies on all sides as these uh, scum kingdoms try to put down our Peasant Rebellion. Now in the last episode we observed a very large force of Kazait heading towards Amitatis. Uh, we took Rotai, we fought several other battles, a Western Empire force took Varagos Castle. In fact, this is very interesting. These fucking cowards are sitting inside their citadel while us rebels just rampage about the countryside here. I find that pretty ironic. Of course, they continue to ask for ransoms and whatnot from our from our uh, our group of nobles that were toting around behind us. Uh, the guys following all the cows and horses just trudging in their horse shit. Uh, but we're not gonna we're not gonna be releasing any prisoners anytime soon unless it's going to be released head from shoulders, right? We're gonna be executing people, if anything. Uh, so to see what kind of attacking force is here at Sinopa. It's been under siege for quite a bit, but it does look like we'll be able to get back and defend. And it is Batania. Big surprise. Uh, and over here, of course, we have a Southern Empire force raiding our village. Scum motherfuckers. All right, so this scum Batanian force is next on our execution list. Uh, and then we will turn our attention to Amitatis. Now, that force in Amitatis looked like 2,600. It might have been Kazate. It was hard to tell. Uh, and this Batanian force is pretty advanced, right? They have Batanian Fians, they've got a bunch of wildlings, they've got a bunch of veteran Falksmen, and we've got, oh, I forgot to tell you this point, I did a little bit of consolidation of our units, tier 5, from our other, our companions, and we will, as usual, disband them, right? We are fighting with tier 4, 3, 2, and tier 1 units in this Peasants Challenge. All right. So we'll sally against the Batanians here. I don't have time to enter the Citadel, so we're going to fight them in the open. I would say the open. It's in this narrow valley, but this will work even better, actually. Uh, I even fought a battle here maybe three or four weeks ago for a different uh, a different mini-series. So at this stage, I know almost exactly what I want to do with this battlefield, and we are going to kite into a nasty kill box, effectively trapping their main force and then destroying them with combined forces. Uh, so we're going to start with our archers and crossbow on this hill, infantry and skirmishers down here in the valley, and then shock troops in a shield and shock formation on the edge of the ridge up there. Uh, so the horse archers towards the back, uh, and this ridge right here is what I mean. I want to get my uh, cav division and then a, a line of shock troops, which are two-handed weapon guys, directly behind them so that they can plug up those holes and then waylay and annihilate any cavalry of the enemy that tries to storm through there. Now, javelin throwers there, that's the skirmishers and the horse archers. Let's put them up back up on the hill here because I plan on almost immediately when their vanguard arrives, kiting. Uh, kiting is effectively a, a strategic pullback of your units. And in this case, we're trying to lure them basically right down this road, right? This won't be the yellow brick road. This will be the red uh, sl slithery road after their blood is fucking released all over it. All right, so their calf is kind of peeling up here. Uh, it's not the big wave that I kind of expected, but I didn't really look closely at their unit composition. They've got a few cavalry here. That guy looked like one of theirs. In fact, Imperial Cataphract, I thought I dumped all our, our Cataphract. Uh, nevertheless, we soldier on here. Whoa, okay, so there's their vanguard. They don't have much cavalry, but they have a huge vanguard. Time to kite. All right, we're going to pull these units back. In fact, the Cav and the Shock Troop Division. I'm going to try to, uh, to tell you what I'm doing here. I'm going to move the skirmishers to that side, the, the third corps and the, and the seventh, which is horse archers. We're going to put them up on the ridge. Uh, the third is going to be on our right. We're going, to, we're going to try to flank the enemy with this third corps. And the eighth corps, some of our better units are over here as well. So I'm kind of tucking them in here so they're, they're uh, free of enemy arrow fire. And our infantry, our first division, is in a square, now effectively baiting the enemy right down the middle of this trap. Uh, now, some of our units are kind of caught up here. It's a bit of a difficult, messy battlefield at this stage, but I think it'll become clear to you in a second what we're doing. So the skirmishers are behind me now. The third and the eighth is right here in front of me. And what we're doing basically is luring the enemy right into this channel for the enemy just to literally run the gauntlet. Still pulling the first division. You can see the death spam. A lot of that is our archers and skirmishers going to work before the heavy blows even happen here. 
The skirmishers are there. We'll put them into a shield wall. I'm up here with the third division. The enemy has a bunch of archers, so let's get Cav in the face of those archers. That'll stop a lot of their lethal rounds from hitting us. And now we're going to wade in here with the third and eighth division. They're right next to me. It's shock troops. Look at the enemy barreling towards the square, and we charge, right? These two-handed weapon motherfuckers get to unleash. I'm going to do a little javelin work on the margin of the battle here, and into battle we go. Now, it's bloody fighting, and I'm wearing a fucking paper sack over my head for a helm. I might even get dropped here, uh, but we're still going to wade in. We do have the RTS loaded, uh, RTS mod. Uh, they got Batanian Fian champs left and right. Uh, so if I do get dropped, though, I'll be able to continue this fight. There's tons of green death spam. I just looked up, and it was like all green death spam. Uh, even though these are elite Batanian units, we're just working them over here. They're getting sucked in directly to the trap like we hoped. Their archers appear to be... Get off me. Their archers appear to be occupied because I'm not getting shot. These Batanian Fian champs are getting clubbed to the ground. And this has been a massacre. They have some archers skirmishing up there. We'll send what's left of our cav into their face. But I think their vanguard just got a mass... Just got, well, I was going to say annihilated. They got emasculated too. They got everything. They got eviscerated, annihilated. Church, choose your word. That fight was a blaze of death we're gonna now position on what's this guy doing he's like in shock he might he probably stood there and was like what just happened to our vanguard it disappeared these are their archers it looks like they're trying to reform we're not gonna let them we're gonna ride down as many of these guys as we can i just looked i have a, literally a sliver of life so i gotta be a little careful here uh, we can bring up archers crossbowmen and our skirmishers to deal with whatever wave this is. They're all coming after the Jarl, of course, trying to collect that bounty. There must be a gigantic uh, bounty on the head. We're not actually we're not actually a Jarl. Don't don't tell the guys here. We're we're role playing. We are a peasant leader uh, of no nobility, right? The peasants hate the nobility, and just like the French Revolution, nobody wanted a title. <laughs> I think they all just routed. Nobody wanted a title when uh, when the heads are rolling down the street. Yeah, this battle's over. Four-minute battle. So just basically an execution of this Batanian force and a far exceeding four-to-one kill ratio uh, against elite troops. I will definitely call this a success and just what we needed because we're going to have to... Well, we've got this other Southern Empire force raiding our villages that we're going to have to deal with as well. Uh, might take a few of their Batanian-type archers, but of course we're not taking any Tier 4 or Tier 5 units. These are just prisoners. Uh, it's been one of our main source of recruiting units, of course, over the course of this campaign. I may also uh, dump off a bunch of food here at, at Senopa. Senopa is, uh, is sort of functioning as the capital of our rebellion. And so we want to load it with food. We want to load it with horses at every opportunity uh, and make sure that it can survive a sustained siege. Well, I'm going to take care of this southern empire fuck first this guy here you, you raiding our village motherfucker it might be time for some executions again our fucking disgraceful enemies here are raiding poor villagers trying to take their goods trying to take their money i mean we're trying to take their money too but we're we're uh we're nicer about it right we're like just share your money with us right we're like the original communists here Everybody will get their even share. Just share your money. It'll be just fine. Meanwhile, these Southern Empire scum are just taking it by force. Well, right in front of the, the villagers here, we're going to execute this Southern Empire force. I actually want more daylight. I can't see at night. I, I just do miserably fighting. I've, now I've got one of these parties of mine that won't join me. So we, we might be forced to fight here at night. I can't stall forever. Fuck it. Uh, we're gonna fight him here. I apologize for the dark. Uh, every once in a while, I will try to adjust my settings so it's a little bit easier to see. Uh, but this part is part of a campaign, right? You're sometimes gonna fight it in the dark, uh, and we're gonna do so here. Look at this shit. We're barely favored, even though they have half our force. Uh, what does that tell you? That tells you that they have elite troops, uh, and we do not. It certainly is not based on the records uh, of like our army success. It'd be interesting to see our army success written up there like Mike Tyson, right? Like 52 wins and, and no losses and 37 wins by KO in the first round. And like that last battle was definitely a KO in the first round. All right, not much strategy here. In fact, I can't see. <laughs> 
So we're going to run some archer wings out on both sides here. We're going to try to funnel the enemy towards the center. I've got uh, first division infantry on the on the left flank and the sixth on on the right, uh, and we'll move the eighth corps up there as well. But I'm just going to let my guys go to work here. Try not to get shot off my horse, uh, and maybe I'll throw a javelin or two into the backs of my guys because I can't see. I mean, it does simulate pretty well for nighttime, but. Uh, uh, you know, it. it uh, you, what I've learned from the settings is you either have to have it like blindingly bright in the daytime and it almost kind of looks washed out or you get this sort of dark, hard to see, someone give me a torch kind of kind of light at night. In fact, I'm turning turning a lamp off here as I ride around and try not to get killed. That, that helps me see a little bit better, but not much. Uh, in fact, we're not going to execute a whole lot of tactics here. This is... Uh, small force. We already have strong defensive position. Our archers are going to work here. This is the main body of their troops here. We'll try to kill killed their flag bearer. We haven't been killed yet, at least. I guess I better not. Uh, I guess I better not say too much before before I get killed here. So our infantry divisions are waiting in. We're going to suffer some losses here. This is just going to be. Uh, have to be acceptable losses. I can sort of try to rake these guys from behind. God damn, man. 142 in the head. I just can't keep my head out of uh, a cons guard's way here. So we'll, we'll assume our wife here. She's got 330 athletics too. She's a badass. In fact, look at how fucking fast she moves. I guess it's because she's wearing a, a an, an eight ounce uh, vest. Or not a vest. She's wearing a dress. Let's do some javelin throwing here. I can see a little bit thread the needle here in between all our units and we're going to tear up here in our finest prom dress uh, and try to run this southern empire force out of here try to avenge her husband who was dropped yet again it, it was like i went from half health to none uh, i must have got shot in the face by a cons guard or something like that motherfuckers there's a noble here down they go that's the guy who's raiding the village we may execute him immediately after this battle uh, and we chase this Southern Empire force out of here. Uh, the raiding of a village with like an army of 350 or whatever the fuck that was is not normal. Uh, and this is very, very acceptable losses here. We have four losses and 30. The injured will get healed, but four losses against 300 and something. That's highly acceptable. Now we got to hope Zuvan didn't get killed there by an arrow to the face. Uh, he's got some nice strong cheekbones though, so hopefully it bounced off. Uh, the raiding, though, I was going to finish that point. The, the raiding is unusual, and the reason that's happening is because we're fighting, you know, seven seven kingdoms. I guess we have a tentative peace with Sturgia, uh, but w come with us. <laughs> Here, we get some... It's it, We actually had a net gain of troops from that. Uh, we've got a ton of upgrades, but we won't be doing those upgrades. The reason they're raiding, of course, is that th we only have three or four possessions, right? We have... Actually, I think we just have the three cities and no castles. And so, so these other seven kingdoms... Once the other cities are under siege, they literally don't have a target, right? They, they, they want to attack us and all we have are villages and so they're attacking them with full armies. All right, well, gain some, gather some resources up here. I thought there'd be a lot more troops uh, than that. Uh, and then I will probably fast forward some of the, some of the processes coming up here. I'm going to have to gather some of the tier five again from my companions, uh, disband those like we've been doing the rest of the campaign here. Um, Sen Opa needs a bunch of food, so I'll do a little inventory stuff that I probably won't bore you to death with. Um, and it'll be onto the, the defense of Amatatas. I hope we can make it down there. 361 defenders. I hope I didn't stall t stall too much handling these two forces. I need to get food into Sinopa here. Uh, so this isn't uh, a luxury trip. This is necessary. Uh, we can recruit some caravan guards. Uh, they've got a handful of troops, low, 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 uh, low level troops that we can take in. Um, and I will kind of just show you the food dumping process, right? We're gathering grain all over the place. Grain is by far the best thing to dump on a city to, to fix its starvation issues, right? The bread and circuses like the Roman Empire. Uh, and in this case, that's going to help tremendously. There's actually a bunch of grain in the stash uh, at this at this town as well. And we will do a little livestock slaughter here. Uh, and that, we can dump some meat on there. Now, meat doesn't have near the same benefit um, for a town. If you dump meat on a town, for whatever reason, 
I, I don't know, maybe these guys are vegans. It doesn't help the prosperity nearly as much as, as if you dump a bunch of grain. These guys are all, are all carb addicted. Um, I actually plan on being a nutritionist and, and a, a sort of fitness life advisor when I retire, uh, sort of part-time just as a hobby job. I might narrate Battles on Bannerlord as another hobby job, but, but that's another discussion. Uh, but we may mix in some nutrition in some of these episodes. I've got a lot of uh, knowledge base. I've done quite a bit of studying, and my wife and I are both habitually healthy eaters. Uh, so maybe I can I can share some nuggets of that kind of stuff with you fellas. You know, I'm, I'm basically looking for material to slide into some of these episodes because there is a lot of the sort of less exciting parts in between the battles. Uh, I, I've been hesitant to show a full campaign because I'm sort of left here uh, monologuing to myself for a half hour. Sometimes if you're in a campaign, there's just nothing going on. Or, or even worse, if you're shuttling goods around, it can take you 15 minutes where there's nothing for me to tell you. I can be like... This town on your right, uh, you know, it's raided nine years ago by the Southern Empire. There's a bunch of villagers that walk around all day. You know, I just won't be able to provide you interesting narrative. So maybe we'll go on riffs about politics. Uh, I will not be bashing any parties here. I won't be alienating or making any of you guys happy by supporting one candidate or another. I will say that the political system uh, in the Western civilization is in a disastrous state, uh, and that's primarily because of infiltration of social media from countries that hate democracy, right? China, Iran, other countries, Russia, North Korea, that want to see democracy fail, that want to show other countries that totalitarianism is the best way, uh, they are winning this propaganda war, right? They are basically showing countries, look, uh, they don't even believe their own elections, right? This is, it doesn't matter who you're for, no matter what, you have to agree. There's somebody raiding here. I'm not going to fight in the dark here against the Kazate, but you would have to agree. Somebody sieging Rotai and I didn't even pay close enough attention, but of course we're sieged. Um, anyways, to finish that point, you would have to agree, though, anytime you have a democracy where a significant part of the population doesn't believe that the election is valid, it doesn't really matter which side won. That is a disastrous situation to be in, right? The whole point of democracy is e e sort of equality and freedom and and uh, clarity and and uh, you know that everything is is trans is uh, is basically available to us. You know, as far as information, nothing is hidden by the state, right? There's not a bunch of fake propaganda. And if we stop believing in that, well, democracy itself kind of falls falls apart, right? So we'll go on a few of these little riffs here over the course of this campaign. Uh, and if you like this kind of stuff, let me know because I might I might riff a little bit more, especially if I do a longer campaign. Uh, I'm quite a talker, especially when I'm caffeinated like this. Uh, and I have a, a wide variety of opinions on a wide variety of subjects. Uh, I will try not to offend people, but that's virtually impossible these days. Uh, so we're we're in pretty good shape here to make a defense, uh, but obviously against this gigantic Kazate force, uh, we are going to have to get inside the Citadel here. There's just no way. Uh, tactics aside, I don't think you can challenge 1,800 horse archers in the open with 700 lower level troops. Uh, and again, this is another situation where not only are we hugely outnumbered, okay, so 872, look at their army, right? 25 dark hands, 23. Uh, they're just stacked with high level units, right? In fact, let's see if I can get. Here you go. 65 dark hands, 53 marksmen. I mean, they're just totally stacked, right? And you know they have a bunch of cons guards, too. All right, so defense here. This must be the third or fourth. If you're a little bored with this, maybe I will riff a little bit more politically. Here's our strategy, right? We're going to lay out archer wings down here in these incredibly easy to defend courtyards. I'm going to have the 6th Division, which is a combination emergency, uh, emergency jam up a whole skirmisher division uh, and a bunch of guys with javelins. They may follow me at some point. Archers over here. This is the 4th Corps. Uh, you see how what a great line of sight they have. And the 5th Corps will spread out over here. And what this does is it covers these access points. They come up those walls on the ladder and they're going to get skewered. Uh, here we'll put the 6th Corps uh, and these guys can throw javelins and whatnot. We'll spread them out a little bit. Uh, but, you know, our strategy for these has been the same because it's working. This this yeah. keep, this citadel, for whatever reason, has lots of those fucking hand grenades. The exploding fireball hand grenades. We will make ample use of those. And, of course, what we will do is, is there's tons of counter siege. Or not counter siege, but they have trebuchets or something. They're fucking lobbing in tons of rounds. Uh, we will make ample use, of course, of our archers in the in the valley there. 
uh, down in the, the courtyard there. And of course, our guys are, are lobbing siege out against these guys. We'll basically be acting like emergency responders, though. Look at this fucking counter siege. I gotta be careful. I'll get blown up here and get killed. Uh, you know, we, we have uh, a lot of different guys that we can put at different locations in a keep siege like this if they become vulnerable. If the door starts to get blown open and they pour in, we'll handle that, uh, etc. This guy's gonna get killed. They are bombarding this tower. I don't know how he survived that. Uh, but we're gonna run up here and try to get these hand grenades and lob them into vulnerable archer uh, archer locations. I'm not gonna describe the the lobbing of the next five of these, six, seven, eight of these if I can if I can get that many. Uh, we will we will we will do a little bit of ranting and raving about uh, all kinds of different things. I lob this in here and blow up a bunch of Kazate archers down there. Ah, well, you're going to miss sometimes. All right, not very exciting stuff. You get an idea in the sieges here. I don't suspect this keep is going to be difficult to hold, but, uh, you know, we shall see. It's all it's 2,000 Kazate and a lot of their forces. I was going to say most. Well, probably most of their forces are elite or high end. Um, so we will go on a little political rant. Of course, social media companies, and I know, of course, it's ironic. I'm using Google here to, to share these videos, which is obviously a social media company. Uh, they learned several years ago that they can make an enormous amount of money, uh, you know, by by having engagement, right? Engagement is obviously where you watch, where you watch YouTube. You're participating in engagement right now. If you if you spend a half hour on Snapchat or Facebook or TikTok every day, you are engaging. Well, what they've learned is to, to design the algorithms, the software programs that that you know basically hand tailor your feed or, or your Google videos to you. They've learned that some of our worst emo emotions actually cause the greatest engagement. Uh, you know, if it's happy kitten videos we end up watching for six minutes, and if it's a fucking guy ranting about the other political party that you despise, uh, you watch for 86 minutes. Uh, and they know this, and so the social media companies have essentially designed this into their algorithms. It's, you know, the algorithms aren't human, they're just, uh, you know, computer learning, basically saying, this is how we get people to watch. Well, the unfortunate effect of that, of course, is that that means that most of our social media is uh, like hatred and, and spurs division. Uh, it spurs fake news. It spurs conspiracy theories. It spurs anger. It spurs division, jealousy, all of our bad emotions. It's basically like, uh, like the anti-Roman uh, concept of a society. We're going to drill some of these guys in the back. Catch that, Lord. I love the animation. It drills them right in the spine. Um, so the bottom line is that these companies now are highly profiting from effectively the division and the destruction of democracy, which is a very ironic and ugly thing, right? You got to think of Facebook, Google, uh, Microsoft, not so much, but uh, definitely Facebook, Google, uh, you know, with YouTube, uh, Snapchat, Twitter, these companies, TikTok, these companies make enormous amounts of money uh, in t basically two main ways dividing and making people angry at each other and then having you know 19 year old girls shake their tits uh, and stuff like that it really is or worse like when they're 15 and and there's no age check and you know and that, then you just get pedophiles pouring in looking for gals ch you know shaking their tits uh, it's a real blight on humanity here well wow, I had a little graphical glitch there apologize uh, so unfortunately you know of course our corporations run our country in America I would say they run most uh, uh, capitalistic systems, but especially in America after the Citizens United Supreme Court case where corporations could donate effectively unlimited money to politicians. That's why politicians on both sides of the aisle are basically owned uh, and don't believe any candidate who says, you know, I'm free and clear of this. It's basically how politics work today. They will uh, annihilate you, just like Bernie Sanders was annihilated. He was politically assassinated because he's anti-corporation. So, of course, the corporations basically uh, joined up with the DNC and destroyed Bernie Sanders. Right? I'm not saying I'm for Bernie Sanders. I'm just, I'm just giving you uh, sort of the insights, in my opinion, of our current disastrous political system here. Uh, as we butcher this Kazate force, they pushed in a little bit there, but you can see the defenses we have. We have the first division there. We have an infantry, or uh, excuse me, we have an archer division supporting them, and we have our elite sixth division there. 
Uh, I mean, they have the same chance of Bernie Sanders getting elected as getting through that gate. Zero, right? The the establishment, these corporations, these rich politicians are not about to let uh, a, a quasi-socialistic candidate here catch you, fuck archers. They're not about to let a Bernie Sanders get in there and upset their apple, you know, upset their apple cart, kill the golden goose of all this money pouring in, right? The, the, these corporations are raking in billions, and they in turn, uh, not directly so much, but they in turn give money to these politicians. I love that guy's working over there with his javelin. Uh, and you get a corrupt system, right? American political system is now highly corrupt. These fucks can sit on committee meetings about, you know, what budget to approve and what military, literally what military contractor to approve for this budget and that budget while they hold private shares uh, of those companies, while they hold stock in the company, the very companies that benefit from the decisions they make and then the stock rips you know 20 percent uh, i'm a financial guy i know all about the insides of, of this stuff uh and they do it in broad daylight right these guys they've been repeatedly caught doing this and they're, of course they're always like well, i i don't have any decision making process in what stocks i own i just happen to you know have bought uh, all of these uh companies and sold everything a day before covid was announced to the public and etc etc cetera, etc cetera, et cetera. and they're on both sides of the aisle right there's a burr fuck some burr from tennessee who's a disgrace uh and the, you know even the the pelosi's and and all of the the other uh, sort of quasi mainstream democrats and republicans are just corrupt right they just are making as much money as they can with open corruption uh, it's a despicable system, and I really fear for, for Western democracies with the assault that we're under, ironically being fueled by the very companies that these uh, politicians are catering to. Uh, so we'll leave that rant there. Uh, I, I can rant like that about all kinds of different things. Some of it will be positive, right? I'll talk about the fact that... Uh, there are positive things that you and I can do for our health, for our mental sake. Uh, like I said, I'm, I'm kind of a fitness buff slash nutrition buff. Uh, we as citizens fortunately have freedom. Now you also have the freedom to eat McDonald's twice a day and just have a fucking horrific early death. Uh, you know, if you don't know that McDonald's food is bad for you there, I just told you, right? I can assure you McDonald's food is bad for you. Uh, it's really barely, uh, barely even qualifies as food. Uh, but this is readily available, and of course it has all kinds of things that the, the human brain gets addicted to, salt, sugar, fat, all that kind of good stuff. It's easy, it appeals to our laziness, which is inherent as, as animals, right, evolutionary animals. What does a deer do, right? It eats grass, and then as soon as it's done eating all day, it goes and lays in the shade to not get killed by a, you know, a coyote. That's what humans now do. We eat all day, uh, and then instead of laying in the shade, we lay it in a house, and watch, uh, you know, you watch my banner alert videos. I, I apologize if anybody watching this is overweight. We're not going to be, I won't be fat shaming here because the bottom line is it's not really anybody's fault. We're really products of our environment. And if you put a fast food fucking restaurant every block uh, and then you don't educate the public about uh, nutrition, of course, what you're going to end up with, unfortunately, is a very uh, unhealthy, obese society that really doesn't doesn't know that there are options besides that right i'll do a little bit of of talking about those options and and what my wife and i do and explaining kind of the best manner and method i think for someone to adopt a healthy lifestyle because and, and i'll end the rant here you cannot instantly eat like my wife and i you would be disgusted you'd be like i'm not eating that you are used to all the chemicals and and i, I don't mean i'm saying you i mean the guys out there unfortunately who are eating the sad diet the standard american diet that's what that acronym stands for uh this is what they they grew up with or, or you know this is what they've kind of been addicted with by our society uh, and it's not really their fault um you know, a lot of people are like, well, it is their fault they're making these choices. Well, not if they haven't been educated on how bad it is and not if they uh, don't have a, a garden and, and a grocery store that has tasty produce. There's a lot of uh, blame that people like to give when in reality we really are products of our environment. All right, we're going to open this up here. This is really boring, this attack at the gate. So even though there's a little bit of risk to this, we're spreading our two infantry divisions. We're sticking the skirmishers to the side, and I have this huge tranche of archers that's going to be basically enfilading fire this enemy as they pour through the door here. Uh, the sixth skirmishers are here, and then I have the second infantry in a square to kind of hold as a stopgap uh, in case the enemy does start pouring in. We can plug up this gap. I'm not too concerned about losing at this stage, although I am getting my ass kicked here. Light them up, archers! 
All right, so now watch these poor fuck Kazates. Look at these guys. They are going to get a visor. Look at all their arrows whistling over my shoulder. Those guys are fucked. Right, they're attacking this infantry line. They're not really going to gain much traction because it's in a shield wall. Meanwhile, they're getting absolutely smoked by our archers uh, and my fast hammer here. Right, I'm just obliterating guys and the death spam. Uh, and this this keep siege basically just ended. Right, we just executed like 200 of their guys, almost in a firing squad here, uh, and it was uh, that was a beautiful thing. Uh, fun too, by the way. It looks like the Kazate is yeah, they're out of here. Uh, so to finish that point, you know, how do you go from from a standard American not so good diet and, and kind of feeling lousy about yourself and having no energy and not really knowing how to cook to eating really healthy where you're, you know, you're, you're making salmon and delicious protein bars, for, you know, uh, custom protein bars uh, and actually beginning to make salads that you'll like. How do you get there? Well, it's the same way you do anything that's difficult. You get there step by step, right? You would you would remove one thing at a time, right? The very first thing I almost always tell people is cut sugar out. The majority of sugar, especially desserts and candy. Absolute garbage for your body, destructive for you, pure empty calories. You guys probably already know this, uh, but it's extremely addictive, right? I'll, I'll, I'll rant about my little chocolate cake story at some point, especially if you guys remind me. Uh, but nutrition is a big part of 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 health and it's really kind of fallen by the wayside in the united states uh really anywhere in western civilization right we've we've poisoned chinese civilizations with with western diet right there's mcdonald's all over and the next thing you know there's a bunch of obese chinese people um so i'll go on a few more of these rants some of them may be beneficial right i might be able to explain to you fellas easy ways and I do mean easy ways to start eating healthy, to start exercising more. And the next thing you know, the same way that uh, that gaining weight and feeling shitty about yourself and, and getting into worse shape, the same way it's auto catalytic. In other words, the same way it, it the activity makes it happen more and more. You get fatter and then you don't want to go to the gym and then you, you eat bad food because you're depressed and then you don't go to the gym and you get fatter. It goes the other way around. If you start getting healthy and start getting rippling muscle and then you want to start eating salmon and stuff like that, uh, it's auto catalytic in a positive manner. Uh, so I better finish off. I think we'll, we'll probably have one more battle as part of this episode. So I don't need to do like a recap at this stage here, but we've crushed this Kazate force. We sent them packing. And I think the defense of Rote uh, is probably gonna be next here in this, in this campaign. Uh, so Amatatis is defended. Uh, I, I dropped some guys in the garrison there. I, I spared you from some parts again. Look at this shit. I'm fucking highly weighed down by prisoners. You know what? We need to cut some weight here. Uh, we are gonna we're gonna release some of these nobles. We are gonna release them to Valhalla, or maybe they go to hell. Uh, these guys that were killing peasants and stuff like that. We are gonna release some of their heads from their body here. Um, I will do this from time to time. And if I do a big tranche where I execute like 30 guys, don't worry, I won't make you sit through. Uh, the execution of all these guys here. Uh, but these guys are literally weighing down our group. I looked at our our little movement numbers there a second ago and it said we were like minus 0. 0.6 to prisoners and shit. Uh, so these fucking nobles are dragging their heels. Evidently, they're sick of being dragged behind our our supply wagons and our, our cows. If you, if you don't know that part, that's how we're uh, role playing. We're, we're uh, transporting these guys along. Of course, they're in chains and they are chained next to each other uh, behind all our supply wagons where all our refuse goes, all our compost, uh, and then all the cows and horses, of course, that are part of our army. And so they are walking in nonstop horse shit and cows pissing on them and stuff like that. Uh, and it seems very appropriate since they pissed on us peasants for, for centuries. There we go. I feel much lighter, uh, are, you know, much less prisoners, and I'm gaining some good traits here. Evidently, I'm deceitful. Uh, just ask our peasants, though. No, we, we, we're we very honest. We're dropping off all Tier 5 and Tier 6. I'm going to have to disagree with that deceitful uh, deceitful tag there. All right, so on to Rotai here uh, to defend this. I think it said Asurai. This is another thing that's happening. I think this is a bug. I don't know if other people are experiencing Look at my gold income from parties. Anybody know what that is? I have 23,000 positive gold. Now, we would be positive gold without that. We don't need money in this campaign. Uh, we have... I mean, money just pouring in from all the goods we're selling. Traveling to Amitatis to besiege. Fuck, the onslaught continues here. I say fuck, but actually I like it. Let's let's do this shit. Uh, the Batanians now are going to try to get to Amitatis. Uh, 
I think we can actually kill this Asurai force, and because we're faster, especially since we have less nobles dragging us down, we can then beat that force back to Amitatis and defend. Because I don't think I'm going to attack 2,700 with 700 low-level troops in the open. Not, not until we're very, very desperate. All right, our forces are in decent shape here. Not great. What's the, <laughs> the Chernobyl quote? Well, not great, but not terrible. Yeah, that's that's what's going on here. All right, so this is a stacked army of Asurai. It's small, but it's stacked. Uh, just a quick glance there. That was about 160, maybe 180 tier five and tier six units. Bunch of Vanguard Ferris. Uh, so this is gonna be uh, definitely no walk in the park here. Uh, we're gonna, yeah, I'm gonna change my cav here. We're gonna use a horse archer cav division and not a horse archer cav division. We're going to have two cav divisions to screen here. I'm going to have the seventh horse archers. I'm going to also add more troops to the eighth corps because look at Zuvan's stats, right? Zuvan is just a beast. I need to be using him more often as a captain. Sometimes I get lackadaisical. Uh, and we're going to use these cav wings to defend while we get into position here. Now, what is the position? I don't know yet. <laughs> that's, that's my strategy for this battle. I don't know. Uh, we're going to wing it as usual. But this part is, is a critical component. Uh, you guys need to be doing this if you if you want to consistently move your troops around with success. I have two different cav lines now in shield wall, and the main reason they're there is screens, right? We are going to set up archers on this hill here in case the enemy rushes over that uh, that that hilltop. I don't know if they're going to, uh, but we are going to we are going to prepare for the best, which is them charging us, and then we will we will assess the worst uh, if they pull back into a defensive manner they would be they would be wise to pull back into a defensive manner uh, but the ai doesn't always do wise things okay so they are kind of pulling off to the side there that's bad for us um, but we will come upon some kind of plan to get some really nasty archer fire on them um, and try to break their defensive position these horse archer fucks uh, we're gonna dismount as as many of these especially as the nobles ah uh, fucking horse took out that kill that fucking guy <laughs> He's yelling to his troops to charge. Kill him! I get a little bloodthirsty around nobles. Uh, oh shit, we're gonna get unloaded on here by all their javelins. Go, go, go! All right, we're, we're in the clear for the most part. Now these cav screens, their primary job here is to screen, right? These guys' job is to limit how much damage our troops take as they move into position. Right, horses throwing javelins, horse archers do mega damage to your troops when they're moving. Right, so we have these calf screens here to slow them down to stop their charges. You can see they're attacking the screens. That's just less of these fucks that are back here attacking our archers. Meanwhile, that means our archers and skirmishers and whatnot, eighth corps, they have less targets. They have a lot less horses running through. They have a lot less guys to shoot at. That means those guys that they have to shoot at get shot with a lot of arrows and green death spam, right? That the old green spam, ham I am and shit like that. We like it. Uh, we're going to light these archers up. Holy fuck, their vanguard is pouring in. Look at the assault they're coming through, though. There's a very bad decision of them to attack here. We have the perfect setup. Not perfect, but it's really good. Uh, and we're going to annihilate this vanguard. It's a huge vanguard, though, and I see tons of fucking palace guards and other high-level troops. All right, let's square the first. Let's pull the 6th and the 8th around to the enemy's flank. You've seen me do this before, but we're going to move the square back a little bit more so that we can actually get behind here with the 6th. We'll pull the 8th on the enemy's left flank. Those guys will be able to hammer the enemy with enfilade fire and wade in with melee. Uh, the cab divisions we can just have charge and the first core what i'm actually doing is sort of manipulating it so that we're, our, our skirmishers here have a really good line of sight you can see them down there swarming the fucking square their their cavalry is sort of in here intermingled this guy is in a daze we put him out of his misery and now the rest of our forces can really go to work here right the skirmishers are there throwing javelins the eighth corps gets sent to charge the second cav comes in behind him and we join him here for some hammer time I'm so old, I remember when that song came out, and I wasn't nine years old. I was considerably older. All right, we're going to wade in here. We're going to deck some of these fucking insolent uh, Asurai skirmishers. It's a huge vanguard, though. I still see palace guards wailing away, and the death spam is challenging, right? They have some tough troops in here. These fucks are chasing after me. Uh, but look at the position our archers have, just raining down death on these guys. Uh, they're all bundled up here. They're... 
Okay, their archers are moving up. Let's get Cav in the face of their archers because they have a lot of archers and half of them, over half, uh, well, maybe not over half. It was like 60-something master archers. So this is a very nasty archer core that we have to now deal with, uh, and there'll probably be losses here. Uh, yeah, master archer, master archer. Look at the death spam, right? It's like mostly master archer. All right, so, and they have a pretty good spot on us here. They're going to be shooting down on our infantry, but it was certainly worth it to annihilate that big vanguard. Let's see if Zuvan can survive this. I've been getting dropped every battle of late, and that's worrisome because I have a mod that dramatically increases death uh, to our to our companions, including Zuvan. Symbolically, the whole rebellion will have problems if Zuvan goes down, right? Won't be good. Now, he's wearing shit armor, right? If people are watching my regular campaign, you're like, well, you never or almost never get dropped. First, we lower player damage somewhat uh, on... Uh, God, there you go, 121 to the head. I didn't even see the arrow. Uh, it just gets dropped. All right, we'll reconfigure here with this guy. This guy's got a little better armor. Actually, a lot better armor. I haven't been able to take this guy's armor because he's he's leading one of our parties. And, of course, I haven't disbanded a party because we have literally been fighting since this Peasant's Revolt started. All right, so archers moving back. Our infantry is still on charge. Uh, we want this infantry just boring in here. They've already done the hard work and closed on these archers. Now we want them... Uh, you know, getting hand-to-hand -hand on these master archers. You can see our archers here are still raking their units coming in, but our infantry is suffering, right? We lost a lot of guys facing their huge vanguard of palace guards, and uh, Aserai has, to me, the second best infantry in the game. In fact, I think you could make an argument that they have the best infantry in the game. Uh, I also really like Batanian infantry, ironically. I just think Batanians have the absolute worst cavalry. It's like fucking absolute garbage. Uh, so we're going to wade in here a little bit, try to help our guys. I like fighting uh, by hand. This guy's got 320-something athletics, so he's more than capable. And, of course, he has a shield, which dramatically improves his survivability. Uh, these are stubborn fucking Aserai troops, though, and we're still outnumbered here. I imagine we our main infantry lines got killed here. That's going to happen, right? When you have lower-level troops against palace guards and whatnot, even with tactics, you can't just fight a flawless battle. Uh, but this battle is over. We're just in the wrap-up stage now. Whew! And this is... Uh, this is can, can continue, and it's going to allow our peasant revolt to continue. As long as Zuvan isn't killed here, I see you coming in there, dude. These guys coming in, fucking couch lance, motherfucking nobles. Uh, our peasant revolt is going to continue, uh, and we're going to continue struggling against these oppressive nonstop forces trying to take us out here. That guy took a hundred and... I'll have to go back and look at that, but I swear that infantryman for them took 130-something, almost 140 damage and didn't die. This guy coming in, trying to couch lance us, take his horse out. This guy will be easy pickings here. Uh, so in next phase, right? The the nobles, just like in real life. Okay, we're in good shape here. The enemy's just got 12. I'm just doing that just to see how close this battle is to being over. Uh, the, the enemies, just like in real life, they're trying to surround and, and destroy our revolt here. Uh, on some level, they're sort of keeping us static by trying to have to defend these three cities. But we're going to continue branching out. I think after we get back, I say after, if we get back and to successfully defend uh, Amitatis against that large, what looks like, Batanian force heading that direction, uh, then our next step might be to head east. We might be heading to Lycaron and, and Phycion, or however you pronounce them yourself, and we're going to basically try to expand our empire, right? I've said a victory... Uh, sort of a victory clause in this campaign so I don't have to play it out to the very last castle. If we hold five castles and five cities at once, uh, or I guess ten cities, I will consider this campaign a success, right? We're fighting with low-level troops against the whole, virtually the whole map. Uh, Sturge is the only empire that's not at war with us. Uh, and we're doing so with these scum... Pe uh, I shouldn't say that. Shh. The, we're doing we're doing so with these valiant, honorable peasants, right? These these looters and brigands and whatnot. I mean, look at this motley crew. We just fought elite Aserai, recruit Forester. Look at the names, right? These are just absolute uh, low-level troops. Looter, <laughs> recruit, recruit, recruit. Uh, Archer, you know, these are tier one, tier two, and of course we do have some tier three and tier four units, but a lot of our army is very weak units, uh, and we just put down a very strong Aserai force 
uh, with a, 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 three, a three to one KDR here, right? Um, so we roll on with this Peasant's Revolt. It's actually been a lot of fun. Uh, if you guys are enjoying those riffs that I made earlier in this episode, let me know. If you didn't like them, actually, please let me know. Uh, I, you know, you can just you can just be like, not a fan of the riff, and I'm not gonna be offended. I'm asking for your opinion, fellas, uh, because I want to know what you guys want to hear when there's a 45 minute episode and we gotta wander around from town to town, uh, uh, selling loot and executing these nobles. Uh, we'll try to mix some history into some of these episodes. Uh, I'm a big fan of history, and so I'll try to talk about other revolts in the past, kind of things that happened that caused them to fail. Uh, we'll do in between here, we'll do little character upgrades. Uh, this gal finally hit, looks like 275 and pole arm. That'll be nice for her. Uh, and we'll continue to try to share little nuggets of wisdom that I've gamed in Bannerlord with my, it's approaching 8,000 hours played. I know that seems impossible. It does count the hours though that the game is just on. So you can't take that for, for everything it's worth. Anyways, let me know what you think, friends. Uh, please like and subscribe if you haven't yet. And I will talk to you guys next time.